welcome back everyone so uh, welcome to lecture 2 so in last class we have seen that how symmetry actually plays an important role in mathematical functions in helping us solve some of the integrals like we took one example where we can see how symmetry in mathematical functions could actually solve help us integrals but uh, that is only one part let us now go back to symmetry in real life symmetry in molecules and see uh, what are symmetry elements what are symmetry operations and how we can classify molecules based on symmetry okay so let's start with lecture two and we will be looking at in more details what is symmetry about so we are all aware of symmetry right uh, as we discussed in the introduction lecture that we see flowers around us uh, there is some sense of symmetry when we see flowers right then uh, let's say we are hanging a photo frame uh, on a wall so we always want it to be perfectly horizontal so we have some sense of symmetry that it looks beautiful when there is symmetry around right so we we already are aware of concept of symmetry it's just that we have to identify the concept of symmetry with respect to molecules around us in uh, small molecules big molecules and so on right so uh, in in this course particularly we will be looking at uh, symmetry in molecules and then uh, we'll try to understand what is what are symmetry elements uh, what are symmetry operations so we'll be defining these terms today and then on the basis of symmetry elements and symmetry operations can we classify molecules and group them and then correlate it with physical properties so that part will come later so let's look at uh, symmetry elements and symmetry operations okay so uh, symmetry elements and then we'll go to group definition later so symmetry elements are geometrical entities uh, like point, line, or a plane about which a symmetry operation can be carried out so you can see while defining symmetry elements we also have to invoke the term symmetry operation right so you cannot define symmetry element uh, without symmetry operation so when when you are defining symmetry elements symmetry operation term comes and similarly when you are defining symmetry operation symmetry element will come so let's say if we are defining now symmetry operation so symmetry operation is movement of an object in this case molecules or a molecule so movement of an object about a set of points which remain unmoved resulting into a, a equivalent configuration of the object we will take examples so don't worry if it is not clear but uh, let's just first uh, get done with the formal definitions so what is a symmetry operation symmetry operation is movement of an object about a set of points 
now these set of points what are these set of points a set of points we'll see uh, which remain unmoved so since these are remaining unmoved while movement of an object uh, these are called as symmetry elements okay so basically symmetry operation is movement of an object about symmetry element resulting into an equivalent configuration of the object so uh, again so symmetry operation when you are defining so symmetry element is coming in the definition so both of the terms are related and you cannot define one without the other so we will always be talking symmetry elements and symmetry operations uh, together okay so uh, let's look at uh, some more examples so let let's see uh, what is the effect of a symmetry operation what is the effect so you can probably think about it now uh, to take the object into an equivalent configuration right and each symmetry operation must have a symmetry element so i'm emphasizing this uh, because it is very important that this difference between symmetry element and symmetry operation is very very clear in our heads uh, because it is really important uh, uh, further down the line so uh, so we should be very well aware of what is a symmetry element a uh, symmetry element is a geometrical entity uh, like point line or a plane about which a symmetry operation is carried out and symmetry operation is the actual movement of an object okay so let's not get confused between symmetry element and uh, symmetry operation so let's say if we are carrying a rotation so let's say this is a equilateral triangle uh, let's define the vertices as 1 2 3 now let's say you're rotating this uh, let us say that there is a axis which is passing through the center of this okay and this axis is perpendicular to the plane of the board so axis perpendicular to the plane of this board now you do a rotation about this axis and rotate it by uh, let's say 120 degrees okay and all the rotations in this class will be anti clockwise so you rotate it by anti clockwise 120 degree what do you get this one goes to this position uh, three goes to two so you have three here and two here so now the triangle looks exactly same so triangle is now called as that it has reached in an equilateral or uh, equivalent configuration because of this movement so now this movement is called as a symmetry operation whereas this axis is called as symmetry element so the triangle is called is uh, to have that there is a symmetry element present about which a symmetry operation can be carried out so that it reaches to equivalent configuration okay so this should be very very clear now in our heads that what is a symmetry element and what is a symmetry operation so now let's say uh, let's try to define all the symmetry elements and operations 
uh, which are required to specify molecular symmetry okay so there are five different types of symmetry elements and corresponding operations which are required to specify molecular symmetry okay so let's look at this one by one uh, let's go to uh, let's make a table or a symmetry element then corresponding symmetry operation and what is the symbol that is used for the corresponding symmetry operation or the element okay so the first one is called as identity so symmetry element will again discuss this in more details let's let me first list it down so symmetry first symmetry element is called as identity the corresponding symmetry operation is no movement so you do not move the molecule in this case so if you do not move uh, the molecule will always be in equivalent position to itself right so we call this and the symbol corresponding to this is e capital e uppercase e. so identity uh, operation and identity symmetry element now let's look at the second one uh, second is plane of symmetry the corresponding symmetry operation yes you have guessed it right it's uh, reflection through the plane and the symbol is sigma and there are three types of uh, planes one is sigma v sigma d and sigma h we will see in uh, details this is called as vertical plane of symmetry dihedral plane of symmetry and horizontal plane of symmetry third is uh, center of symmetry center of symmetry in some books you will also see it as uh, center of inversion or inversion center they all mean the same thing the corresponding operation is inversion of all points or you can say atoms because we are dealing with molecules through the center so we will be inverting we'll see again how to do this how to perform the symmetry operation uh, this is just the definition uh, inversion of all points or atoms through this center and it is denoted as lower case letter i the fourth is uh, proper axis of rotation proper axis of rotation let me go to next page actually it's so we had symmetry element symmetry 
operation and the corresponding symbol right and we were looking at proper axis of rotation now the corresponding operation is one or more rotation about the axis you can also say by an amount m into 2 pi by n so we'll see what is m what is n in more details and the typical symbols are c n to the power m okay so n is uh, this n 2 pi by n and this m goes over here okay this n goes over here So if something is there is a proper axis of rotation, then there also has to be a improper axis. Improper axis of rotation. It is also called as rotation. reflection axis now the corresponding uh, symmetry operation is n fold rotation this rotation is actually same as uh, this one proper axis of rotation but this is coupled with or followed by so there are two operations in one improper axis of rotation first operation is n fold rotation followed by reflection in a plane which is perpendicular to the rotation axis we will see again by examples it will be clear but uh, let's see so in the same nomenclature as c n m this is described as s n m okay so m times 2 pi by n followed by a reflection in a plane perpendicular to this rotation and uh, again whenever i am doing any rotation so all the rotation in this class will be anti clockwise so it really does not matter but you have to follow one convention throughout so that you are uh, you do not make mistakes so if you are following clockwise rotations you can follow clockwise rotation there is no harm in that you will get the same answers your intermediary steps may have different configurations but the ultimate answer to any given problem would be same uh, but for the sake of convenience you can keep following any particular one so if you are following clockwise keep following anti-clockwise i like to follow anti-clockwise so i'll be following anti-clockwise rotations okay so now let us uh, look at each of the symmetry element and symmetry operations uh, one by one okay so let's start with e identity okay so as you know the identity we have said that corresponding operation is there is no movement of the molecule so the identity operation
does nothing to the molecule. You will say why it is required then if you do not actually do anything then why do we have it? We will see the importance. Uh, so, the corresponding symmetry element. So, what will be the corresponding symmetry element? Remember like uh, when we uh, first said the symmetry element is a set of points that remain unmoved while doing the rotation or while doing while performing a symmetry operation. So, in this case the symmetry element is the whole molecule. The whole molecule itself is uh, a symmetry element because the whole molecule itself is not moving right. All the points in the molecule are remaining at its own original position. So, then we can say that every molecule has at least this uh, element. So, this element is ubiquitous in nature, it is present in all molecules. Every molecule has the symmetry element. Now, what is the importance of this? Why do we have it? So, importance is same as the importance of digit. 1. So, for example, like 1 is required to define inverse of a number, right. So, similarly, E is required to define inverse of a symmetry operation okay so just like uh, one is required in uh, algebra to define any inverse e is required to define inverse of a symmetry operation so that's why we have e now let us look at the second one so before we actually go for symmetry uh, point of symmetry or the inversion center or the plane, let us first define proper axis of rotation. So, proper axis and proper rotation which is defined by C and M. Okay. Now, if we rotate, we have seen an example of rotation by rotating an equilateral triangle, but let us look at the actual molecules. Rotate a molecule by 2 pi by n or you can say 360 degrees by n and if the rotation brings the molecule into an equivalent configuration or some books you will say position 
then we can say cn exists okay and the symmetry uh, element is called as axis of symmetry in short or you can say proper axis of symmetry uh, so for example for a 2 pi by n rotation there is a n fold axis of symmetry so if the rotation is uh, let's say if we say that there is a c2 axis this would imply that the rotation is yes you guessed it right 180 degrees right 2 pi by n so 2 pi by 2 is uh, 180 degree if there is a c3 axis present the rotation is tell me 120 degrees right so let us now take an example uh, let's say draw a right handed coordinate system x y z now let me draw water molecule so while drawing water molecule i will place oxygen at origin and then the two protons or two hydrogens in yz plane okay so the angle is the standard water angle and this is the yz plane is the plane of the board x is coming out of the plane this is how i'm going to draw all my coordinates all the time okay now if i'm carrying out and then let's label okay or let me color one edge differently so that we can differentiate the two hydrogens so now let's say if i now do a c2 which is along z axis so i'm i'm taking this axis over here this axis and the rotation is like this anti clockwise and if because it is c2 so the rotation will be of 180 degree okay so now how the molecule would look like so let's draw the molecule so o will remain at its own position right now what happens to the two hydrogens the blue hydrogen will come at this point and the red hydrogen will come at this point right but the the whole molecule as such is equivalent to this molecule right so we can say that c to z exists now let's take an ex another example let's say if we do x y z rotation uh, c2 z rotation on the coordinate system itself okay so let's move the whole coordinate system with respect to c to z axis what do you get minus x now x goes to if i'm doing this flipping the x will move towards minus x right so x goes to minus x the y will go to minus y right so if you see this the y will go to minus y x will go to minus x z remains where it was so x becomes minus x y becomes minus y z remains as z okay so z did not change so because it is c to z so z axis remains its at its own position because z axis is collinear with c2 axis so the c2 axis 
as we defined because it is a symmetry element c2 axis will not change its position so anything which is lying about on c2 axis for example the oxygen was lying on the c2 axis so oxygen itself would not change similarly here z axis would not change here so x will go to minus x y will go to minus y and z will remain here so uh, let us stop here and we will see more examples uh, of proper axis of rotation in next class so that it is very clear in our heads that how a symmetry axis or how a proper axis of rotation actually works all right thank you